Hunt Showdown is a game about loss and regret. It features a lot of skins that only affect your appearance. But out of 100 plus skins in the game, there are a few skins of hunters that rise above the others, seemingly taking on personalities and stereotypes of their own. So we are here today to list them out for you. Starting with the Edgelords, we have here on screen. We have the King of the Edgelords, Dr. Bone, the Batman of the Hunt Showdown universe, hiding in every shadow and crevice possible. If you play Hunt Showdown for more than a few hours, you will see this skin more than a few times. Typically wielding a variant of the Frontier 73, or if they're confident, a Vertelli with a Deadeye scope. But despite this, they will still miss a majority of their shots, and they refuse to engage in long-range battles. Typically deciding to either rush into short-range fights regardless of how outgunned or outnumbered they are. It doesn't matter if you are in a house or running away, they will chase you down to the ends of the earth. And then we have the secondary subclass of Michael Myers, a man wielding an axe or a bomb lance who will forego any and all rules of self-preservation or safety, typically not even hiding. The second they spot their target, they will usually run in a straight line with their weapon high above their head, attempting to catch you off guard, which will work a decent amount of the time because Hunt Showdown subscribes to the notion that a slug to the chest will not kill you, but an axe to the head will. This flavor of Edgelord is the most dangerous when sitting inside of a building, typically when you're fighting a boss, or they are. Most of the time, the last thing you'll see or hear is a door opening, and then be in the spectate screen. In short, if you fuck with the king or any of these edgelords, they may not be the most skilled, but remember, she edged on my rifle until I lord. Now onto the place filled with diapers, pills, and as much yogurt as you can eat, the retirement home, with the king of the elderly being the coal bearer, or aka Saint Nick. After losing his comfy job at the factory at the North Pole after the divorce with Mrs. Claus, he decided to spend the rest of his life hunting down survivors and monsters alike. Wielding a bing bong fuck your life loadout consisting of a slugged Winfield 1887 Terminus and a Cadwell conversion uppercut with dum dum rounds, most fights result in one of three ways. Ending one, the bleeding heart route being long or medium range and being shot in the back with dum dum rounds. The game quickly turns into a horror movie as fat bearded Michael Myers chases you around the map, tiring you out before putting another round on the back of your head. Ending 2, Premature Blaster. You walk around a corner while you're fighting a boss and everything you see goes black. Ending 3, Santa's coming to see you, a jolly fat man 200 feet away. He's running at you, staring at you, he shoots at you with his shotgun, wildly missing. You pull out your penny shot derringer, in all honesty Santa is only dangerous in medium range, and you shoot him in the face. So in the end, don't let Santa come to your home. Moving from the Santa shooting his presents into your stocking, we go to the family tree with no branches, specifically the father, the redneck. This 320 pound gator fucking 12 inch packing some bitch is known for his terrible vision and his hyper aggression. The only thing shorter than his future is the range of his weapons. Running a double barrel with penny shot, majority of the time this slab of meat is followed by his trusted sidekick, Red Shirt, who normally has the same loadout or a bare bones Springfield. Overall, as long as you don't get near them to smother breath and you're not related to them, you should be fine. Moving on to the land of wasted potential and honorable genocides, we have the Honored Ones, a collection of people who have come from Asia all the way down to the bayou of Louisiana to fight monsters and other hunters who have come to take their glory. Usually equipped with a thousand-folded toothpick and a crossbow with explosive arrows, they typically never use their katana, being able to snipe with the crossbow from long range. One of the most fair weapons in the game, by the way, instantly killing most hunters. Though surprisingly, in the 2024 Olympics, they can't do archery very well. We've gone from the country that has vegan bears to the bear fuckers. We have aptly named furries, deciding that of all the things they could wear between different types of normal clothing, they chose to wear unsterilized animal bones, 
looking similar to African witch doctors, usually running Vertelli in a pack. Just like most incels, they are scared of getting close and intimate. The key to this category is the Lonely Howl. Not known for the high amounts of skill, they will initiate the strategy of shooting from afar and taking pot shots and missing 90% of their shots. They don't even get to their favorite part of being viciously mauled by the giant bird or crocodile. Hailing from the sand dudes of Egypt, we have Haley. He is in this category of the clown. He's the only one in it. This is one of the skins that try hard stay as far away from as they can, a shining beacon to any potential snipers. The gold and silver mask does him no favors. Most people, even veterans, can count on one hand how many times they've been killed by this clown. Since there is no defined person that plays this character, except people who want to run around covered in baubles, typically they're running a random loadout since it's usually a very casual type of player using Haley. You never know what to expect, though you can't expect a lack of skill. Dig the sand out of your underwear and grab some loop. We're now into the bondage category. Not that stats exist in the game, but they technically boast the best armor. Running double hatchet Romeo with Quartermaster, these psychopaths are a more extreme version of the hillbilly. Most of them play like they have zero visibility, running full sprint everywhere, and running this ultimate short range loadout, making them possibly one of the most dangerous combatants in a house. If they are not seen at long range, they are almost impossible to beat. From nipple clamps to state government, all the skins in this category all seem to be in high positions of authority. From Sheriff to the man from the Matrix, Sheriff Hardon being one of the main characters of the game. Not a whole lot to state in this category except the in-between of edgy and normal skins. These skins are some of the cleanest in the game though, so if your obsession is fashion, you'll love these skins. Dope aware these skins do fall into a subcategory. There is nothing that attracts sweaty players more than dark skins on a dark map. Except other dark skins that have been recently nerfed. Given the look of most of these skins, these ones are very easy to hide in dark corners with, making them one of the notorious ones you'll see in death screens. Typically running Cadwell Conversion or Uppercuts, they'll get the jump on you, and if you're unlucky enough, they'll be running ple Bleed or Poison alongside them. With that, we cover the one flaw of this game, no anime girls. Now we cover the Tencent villains. Each one of these fit in this archetype because they look like shitty Batman villains. The queen of this category being the daughter of Decay, because she can blend rather well into the scenery. Now being the queen of this category does not mean much as all of these characters in this category are rather rare to see, like a shiny Pokemon but with a myth look and no stat difference, often running across with bleed arrows and a Boreheem extended mag pistol. The pistol though is just a formality, because if the daughter misses multiple crossbow shots, dispatching her is quite easy. Now we go on to the schizos. The man running the asylum is Kane, where in his natural habitat he'll be in a bush with a Mosin in his hands. You can expect these players to be the most paranoid and immobile of any of them, never standing out in the open and always hiding behind cover or other terrain. They're known as one of the least desirable characters due to having a skin with a negative reputation often attracting players with terminal swamp ass. Most fights with canes are unremarkable as they last about 10 seconds given their nature. Usually the fight ends before you even know Kane was in the area. It may be a small category, but it's a category nonetheless. The zombie, remnant, and bad hand. This will be focusing on bad hand. Bad hand himself, possibly the rarest skin in the game, requiring a sub 1% chance dark chibi roll. Most who own it likely don't run it due to it being a mid skin. Usually running an uppercut with a backup uppercut. Due to its rarity, not much is known about this creature, but it's not especially dangerous if it's anything like its normal counterpart. And sadly, since we can't have anything nice, we don't even get a thematic skin for this thing. No special weapon skin reserved for him whatsoever. Now on to the real tryhards, Devil's Advocate. Weirdly enough, this is the exact opposite of Kane. Foregoing all stealth and employing Rochambeau tactics, running into nearly all situations guns blazing and melee weapons raised. There is nearly no way to tell which angle they're coming from, and all you need to know is that upon reaching about 30 feet from you, Final Fantasy music will start playing, 
and you'll enter an unskippable cutscene where only one of you will leave alive. Typically running double dolches and a cane sword, most fights against them end about as fast as fights against a cane. And no matter what, you typically will not leave unscathed. They do seem to be genetically coded to have good aim. And as a final note, there was a formal king of this category, the headsman, but he got nerfed, so fuck him. With that down, we have the Buffalo Hunters, Warlords of the Plains, the Chur Hunter. With this skin, they fully commit to the bit. Bows and arrows, tripwires, all the fixins. Of course, also running a hatchet. If there's any racial stereotype skin, it would be this one. Surprisingly, this skin is also decently rare. Even more surprisingly, it's one of the least dangerous skins to encounter. Recreating the Bear River Massacre of 1863. Men with bows and traps getting mowed down by men with six shooters. But as said before, encountering them is the equivalent of being given a free kill. To finally round off this video, we have the junk drawer. People that were wildly uninteresting. If you didn't see any of your characters in any previous category, they'll be put on screen now. I'm sorry that it entered the trash pile, and we regret to, we regret to inform you that your character was too uninteresting to put in any archetype to have appeared anywhere else. If you'd like to, of course, head to the comments and scream at me about why your character should have been given their own category, go ahead while I play elevator music and show you a nice slideshow of each of these characters.